Jesus didn't dwell on the comment he made, just hold but, he, but, but he went straight get to his okay. anointing and pulled out a word from out of his spirit. And, and, and that's a important lesson um, to us. Um, sometimes it is not it is not us trying to do battle. We saw Philip do that earlier. Philip didn't try to do battle with Nathaniel over the comment that he made. Philip didn't attempt that. All he did was was say, come and see. And, and 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 by him saying come and see, come and look for yourself, that's just sidestep all that other stuff. And sometimes it's like a sidestep the other stuff. You know, a couple weeks ago we talked about being a will with last week. We talked about not being offended. Because when we when we allow ourselves to get offended, then we take the um the emphasis off of spreading the word of Jesus Christ into putting it on taking care of our own self. You know, and we stop talking about Jesus, and we start talking about what you did to me. And really, what you did to me really don't matter. Because you ain't got to heaven or hell for me. So it don't really matter what you think. It don't matter what you say. I know who I am. I know what I am. I know who I am in Jesus Christ. And if I don't know the relationship that I'm creating and, and, and starting with Jesus Christ, will help me to know. A lot of times, folk can't get to where they need to go because they don't even know who they are. And, and they don't know how to respond to negativity because they think that never that negativity ought to be a a part of them always. I always been there, I will never be up. I always ain't been nobody. I always ain't been no good. I always ain't been this. But once you begin to know who you are in Jesus Christ, that negativity starts to bounce off you. And you begin to realize that that is not that is not your place in life anymore. And, and it never should have been, because you were created better than that. The Bible said that we're fearfully and wonderfully made. So we know we created better than that. But sometimes the care of the life will get on you to such an extent where you can't see no better for yourself than that. But I thank God that learning about a relationship with Jesus Christ is, 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 is that very thing that is going to lift us up to a place where we belong. And lift us up to a place where not only where we belong, and we can see where we belong, but we can see where other folks fit in too. Jealous how the people, part of their problem is they ain't got a right relationship with Jesus Christ. I don't care who it is. If you're jealous how you can't see but your way and how you fit in, and you can't see how nobody else fit in, Jesus ain't came in yet. <laughs> you might know who he is. He might have been walking up down the street. If you don't recognize him, that's so and so child or whatever. If you don't recognize him, but he ain't came in yet. Because because when he come in, you begin to realize where everybody else fits in. And you begin to realize that we are not of ourselves unto ourselves. But this thing is a shared ministry. Oh, oh, we gotta be willing. We about to do some things in here. Y'all, y'all women about to get blessed this weekend. I know that. Because some stuff about to go down. Some stuff about to go down. I had to speak up in here and see what's going on. <laughs> but um, some stuff about to go down. Some stuff about to go down. I mean, that 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 God is gonna bring some ministry through here like never before. Now y'all done seen um, Sister Pat Branch a couple of times, but well, watch what she do up in here said. Watch, watch what ministry she's, she bringing in said that she had preached over here at least three times. And y'all, I know y'all enjoy her, but y'all can see her in a different light. Y'all can see her in a different way. And then my mother gonna be here. And um, y'all don't really know her in the ministry like that, but, but but, but what she's seen and what she's experienced and what she is experiencing right now, it's going to be a blessing to y'all. And, 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 and I pray that the women get so set on fire that when they come around us on Sunday morning, all the rest of them be kept on fire too. And that's how it should be. Because, because it ain't just about me getting up preaching or me getting up teaching, but it's about the body ministry, the ministry going forward. And when the ministry begins to go forward, everybody get blessed. Everybody get blessed. Everybody get. I remember a plenty of times as a young associate minister, um, people would, would try to put me at odds with my pastor. Hey guys, how y'all doing, man? People would try to tell me, give a change and put me in odds with my pastor. God would never let me stick like that or even move like that. God would always instruct me how to how to enhance what he was already doing. How to be a part of, how to be a team player on what he was already doing. Now all of a sudden, when they saw they couldn't get us divided, and they saw that we were together, God started doing things, God started moving things, and God started taking things forward. See what God wanted to do, because
because I wasn't going to be offended and he wasn't going to be offended. We were going to move forward together. And, and that's what I want y'all to see on this Saturday weekend thing. Oh my God, God going to do some things to him. And I want to be praising the Lord for it because you know what? It's going to make my job even all that much easier. And I thank God for it. And that's what it should be about. We should understand how to use the gift of God that we have. And, and, and the best time to use your gift of God is when the devil come against you. Oh, yeah. oh that's what oh, oh, see, because <laughs> it's as good as the enemy want. It's as good as the enemy want for him to think that they can throw you off your game. You got gifts and you got abilities that God has put in you. All you got to do is just let that thing go. Activate that thing. I mean, no, excuse me. It's already activated. Let it go. It's already activated. Let it go. The devil come against you and he, he hopes you don't reach into your spiritual bag of tricks. He, he hopes that you forget about the power of prayer. He hopes you forget about the power of worship. He hoped that you forget about the power of just standing still and seeing the salvation of the Lord come down. He hoped you forget about all that stuff because he knows that if you start fighting him over yourself and by yourself, he gonna whip you. But he can't whip that Holy Ghost that's with that with him. And that's part of the reason why we get relationship with God. Oh, you know, we we seek a relationship with God that we might be strong towers in God, we might be protected in God, that we might be witnesses. Every time Jesus sent somebody out after he had healed them, after he had um, saved them, after he had delivered them, he sent them out on a mission. He sent them out on a mission now. Go. Go and sin no more. Go and live. Go and tell. Go and stay with your family and do, do this, do that. Oh, it was on a mission. It, and some people he even said, come and follow me. Come with me and get a more intensive training. And get even more learning, because then I'm going to send you out. Then I'm going to really turn you loose on some folks and watch what God do. And see, these are the things. I was praying about that today. Oh, so I was praying that God do this and send this in goodwill and send that in goodwill, blah, blah, blah. And God said, I'm already sending seed. And so what you going to do with the seed, I can. I said, what? I mean, I, I read up there. And um, I feel, I'm, I'm like, what? And the Lord showed me, you know how the Lord showed me this stuff. And he showed me Cinderella. I said, okay, Lord. He showed me Cinderella. It was nothing that they used that they didn't already have to get Cinderella ready for the ball. Mm -hmm. Only thing that happened, well, no. Everything she had, everything she was, they took it and enhanced it. When they touched her with the wand, now you know it's a fairy tale, of course. But when they touched her with the wand, all of a sudden the raggedy dress that she had on became a beautiful gown, a little raggedy slipper, became some beautiful glass slipper, the little rag that was tied around the head, became a gold tiara, the, the dried up pumpkin sitting on the side, became a beautiful stagecoach, the, the little mouse mice that were running around became horses and groomsmen and all that. He didn't take nothing that he didn't already have and create a relationship with it. He created, look, and she already had a relationship with all that stuff. Mm -hmm. All that stuff was in her surroundings. Yeah. All, every bit of it was in her surroundings. She had a relationship with it. God had put it up. They had put it in her way. Now I'm using this as a spiritual parable because look, it, it's the same way here. God has already put everything he needs to be able to create what he wants. Already, already. And don't think it ain't Bible because when God decided to make man, he formed man out of the dust of the earth. What did he make before he even made man? He made the earth. He made the dust. So, so, so God will always have available to him what he needs to be able to take it and to, and to recreate it into what he wants. All we got to be is willing. All we got to be is willing. And once we're willing, God, God not only creates us, but he puts inside of us that very thing we need to go for. And you'll be surprised, surprised, surprised. What you can do in God, once you begin to understand what he's put in you, it's all about relationship. All about creating relationship. And you know what? The, the other part of this that, that, that I love about this part of the lesson, Nathaniel about to get twisted all up in the wind with the other thoughts. And Jesus, and Jesus, and, and, and Philip, Philip heard. Philip brought him back with just a word. Jesus brought him back with a word and the, and the showing of the anointing. And he showed the anointing by using that spiritual gift. Jesus told him some things about himself that he, that Jesus should have never known, that nobody should have never known. And that thing got, got, got Nathaniel's attention to such an extent because he told Nathaniel where he saw him at. 
showing that I saw you under the fig tree. And once you begin to tell him that he knew, and the thing he knew, it wasn't no way that he should have known it. That soothed his whole spirit. It changed his whole spirit around. All of a sudden, he went from being belligerent and, and talking smack to just like, what in the world? Who, what kind of man is this? And look, Jesus didn't use that, you know, and we talked about this a couple weeks ago, that God desired for us to have spiritual gifts. 1 Corinthians 12, 13, 14, you know, they talk about the spiritual gift. God is that. But the spiritual gifts are not are not given to us so we can say, hey, hey, yeah, look at me. You see, Jesus didn't use it like that. Jesus didn't use it like that. He, he didn't use it to say, ha, ha, look at me. Really, it's ha, ha, look at the spirit of God within me. That's really what it is. When Peter, Peter and John later in, in the book of Acts, Acts chapter 3, when they said, um, look on us, and the man looked at him and he was begging for money. He, was, he looked at him and expected money. But he said, silver and gold have we none. But such as we have, what did they have? They had the spirit of the Holy Ghost. And, and it's not about me and what I can do, but it's about he that is within me. And that's how Jesus used it. Jesus used that as an example of, of, of the power of God in him. Not for his own fame or fortune or recognition, but that God will be glorified, all right? Now, you got to get that. Um, <laughs> the gift in the church, the gift that Jesus used was the gift called the word of wisdom. He gave him a word of wisdom. And, no, excuse me, a word of knowledge, excuse me. <clears throat> huh? Oh, uh, that's, that's he used the gift called the word of knowledge. Um, 1 Corinthians 14, and you, you can turn that one. Um, 1 Corinthians 14, I want you to see that. It's to the right of where we are in John, back Romans, 14, 14, 12. Let me show you what the Spirit is looking for. Are there any questions before I go into this scripture? Y'all know I start saying a whole lot of stuff. And I just pray you keeping up with me. Everybody keeping up, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so, so don't think that, that that's strange 
I mean, it might be strange to some because they ain't see it like that, but God moved like that. And, and, and if you listen to what you just talked about, let me read this scripture for you. When you listen to what you just spoke about, listen to, listen to this scripture, 1 Corinthians 14 and 12. Even so, ye, ye for as much as ye are zealous of spiritual gifts, seek that ye may excel to the edifying of the church. Let me bring that down for you. As much as you want God to use you, as much as you desire for God to use you, you ought to be seeking after his gift. Yes. You know why? So you can be great at one thing. And that is building up the church and encouraging God's people. Amen. You see? It's right there. It's right there. That, that's what the gifts are for. So you can be great at that one thing. See, people can twist this stuff up. They can twist it up and they can use it or try to use it for, um, for the wrong motive and, 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 and not in love or they can choose not to believe it, that's on them. But the church is not the church. Understand what I'm saying? The church is not the church that God wants it to be until the gifts are moving in the in the church. If the gifts ain't moving in the church, and I'm talking about all of them, I ain't just talking about, I ain't just talking about, you know, gifts like that we think, look, some gifts we think that we can do ourselves, like the people think they can say. Some people think they can talk, you know, you know, those that but I'm talking about those deeper spiritual gifts, the gifts of faith, the gifts of healing, the, the gifts of huh? The ones when you uplift somebody else just by what you see. Exactly. So, those the, those things. Yes, exactly. Those things that God began to put God began to pour into your spirit. God began to pour it into you. Those things, those things, along with those other gifts, because other gifts can and, can edify the church also. But I'm saying sometimes people can think that it's me and it ain't none of you. Whatever gift it is, even if you decide not to serve God with it, you'll, you'll still have it, but you won't be able to do with it as God has called for you to do it. And see, that's the, that's the thing. You know, people can, oh, you can still use your gift. The Bible says gifts are given without repentance. I won't take it back from you, but you can't use it. And you can't, and you can't encourage yourself in it. You can't use it, you can't flourish in it, or it won't work like it's supposed to work because because you're not in the right mind frame to, to set it forth as God is given. Once you get in the right mind frame, and see, look, the gifts are, 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 are how can I put it? They are contingent also on your relationship with God. The stronger your relationship, the more sold out your relationship, the more committed your relationship, the greater your gift will hurt. The more bound for your love is with God. Oh man, go ahead, man. Yeah, exactly. Because, because if you turn back one chapter to 1 Corinthians 13, they will tell you that though I have tongues of many angels and speak all manner of prophecies and understand all dreams, if I don't have love and you can't. And you can't have a relationship with God until you love God, until you love yourself, and until you love others. And I ain't just talking about just saying the word. I'm talking about doing the word. Amen. Hey, so, 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 so this is what the gifts are for. The gifts are for the edification of the church, the, the encouraging of the church. The um, gifts, and, and also, it is one of the tools that God uses to convince people of his ability. Now, we teach this here. Ability and power are the same thing. Abil power is ability. Sometimes we think about power as, as strength or force. But power, power is ability. Power is the ability to get things done. That's what it is. If I got enough strength to get up and run to that door and run back, it's because I got power in my legs. I, power is ability. So, so not only is it for edifying the church, but it's also to confess people. And, and in this case, Jesus did both. He not only lifted up God's name, but he also used it to convince Nathaniel of who he was. Um, Hebrews 2 and 4. I think I've got this. This is a kind of a hard to understand scripture, so I'm going to read it in another translation. Hebrews 2, I'm going to read 1 through 4. I'm going to read it in the voice translation. I like the voice translation. It is a good translation. Hebrews 2, I'm going to read chapter 2, verses 1 through 4. And if you got it, you can follow along, and, and I believe it happened. It will have explained a little more. Hebrews 
chapter two. Uh huh. Verses starting at verse one. Starting at verse one, going to verse four. Hebrews. It's to the right of Corinthians. Keep on going. What is it near? Is it? Yeah, Titus. Uh -huh. Second Timothy. Yeah, yeah. There you go. Um, chapter two. Matter of fact, you might skip right over Titus and Titus and them because they they short. But if you but you should run them in. Um. All right. Everybody got it. It's right behind that chapter. I'm filling them. All right. Now I'm going to read it out of the voice. Chapter 2, verses 1 through 4. That is why we ought to pay even closer attention to the voice that has been speaking, so that we will never drift away from it. For if the words of instruction and inspiration brought by heaven's messengers, that's through God's Spirit, were valid, and if we live in a universe where sin and disobedience receive their just rewards, then how will we escape destruction if we ignore this great salvation we heard it first from our Lord Jesus Christ? That's the author and the finisher of our faith. That's where it all always comes from. Then from those who pass on his teaching, God also testifies to this truth by signs and wonders and miracles and the gift there you go, of the Holy Spirit lighting on those that he chose or coming into those that receive it, those that God has ordered for to have. When we we are only messengers of God's truth and God's truth has been in the world and God's truth, if nobody else spoke a word about God, God's word is still true. It, is, it, it was true from the beginning. It, it was true from Adam and Eve. It was true from Moses, David, Solomon, um, um, you know, the disciples, Paul, Revelation, it's been true. If nobody else spoke another word, that's enough. But look, God ain't just doing that. God is still pouring his spirit in people. And he's still pouring a spirit in and, and, and allowing the rivers of living water to come flowing out. What is that? It is the word. The word that comes flowing out. It is the gifts that are put in us. And they are put in us not to be um, something else um, that's opposite of the word that's already written. Every gift, every good and perfect gift that comes from the Lord is coming from the same source. So when you pour out of that word that is within you, you're really reaching in and pouring out of that word and revelation that's already been written in the Bible. You know, you're not pulling something brand new out, something brand new that ain't got no bearing on nothing else. All you're pulling out is the revelation of what's already in the word. And, and, and sometimes God, God, God uses us to such an extent that, that, that we can take things that we have seen and heard all our lives. And all of a sudden, you get to break it down to somebody through a witness. All of a sudden, we break it down to somebody, and, it, and we break it down like they ain't never heard it. And that's the very thing that makes a difference in their life. And these are those signs and wonders, the revelation that is what is in the Bible. It is a revelation to know that God is still healing people. It is a revelation to know that. And, and look, and look, how do we manifest that? Because we, Bible said that we can lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. It's a revelation to know it, but it's another thing to see it happen right in front of your face. You understand? It is another thing altogether, but it's a revelation to know it and to believe it. It's a revelation of God. But to see somebody with the gift, and maybe you don't even have that particular gift. It's just that at that moment, God, I need to pray. God, I need to lift your name up because somebody needs your touch. And I'm not calling on what I have. I'm just calling on what he said. I'm afraid every day. I'm the Lord. It's time out for this. I'm too broke. I'm too tired. I'm too sick. It's time out for this. Not when your word say, by your strength that I'm here. Not when your word say, I will pour you out a blessing. I will open up the windows of heaven. If you have done what you're supposed to do, I will open up the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that you won't have room enough to receive. When your word is saying all that, I need to catch this revelation. I need to catch this revelation and speak this word. What am I speaking? I'm not speaking nothing I made up. I'm speaking what he said. That's what you said. <laughs> you know, you know, that's what you said, God. And sometimes we need to get God, get on God's level. 
and say just what he said. And look, and be thankful to him when God has put gifts in your heart and God has put gifts in your spirit. You know, uh, one of the things I believe in, I believe in strongly that, 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 that it is more to Christianity than just asking God to forgive you for your sins and come into your life. That's just the beginning. Yeah, yeah, that's just the beginning. And, and look, not only asking him and creating the right relationship with him, learning about it, that, that's still a, hmm, it's more than that. Not only living for him, being saved in relationship, living for him, it, it's more than that. Not only being saved, living for him, creating relationship with him, telling others about him, it's more than that. This, this, this gospel is, is for us to become empowered with the Holy Ghost. With the Holy Ghost? The Spirit of God. The Spirit of God? The same Spirit that God breathed into Adam and Eve. This is, this is what we're about. If we stop, if we stop at salvation, we're robbing ourselves. If we stop at relationship, we're robbing ourselves. If we stop at living right, we're robbing ourselves. If we stop at telling people about him, we're robbing ourselves. But the Bible says you shall have power when the Holy Ghost is come. Acts 1 and 8. I love that scripture. That's what I, and, 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 and look, we shall have ability. What ability do you need? To go out and win souls? Yes, you shall have that ability. What is that ability that you need? To go out and um, and pray for the sick and they shall recover? Yes, you shall have that ability. What ability do you need that to be able to praise me and worship me in the spirit and truth? Yes, you shall have that ability. And when you have that ability, what does it do? Two things. It lifts up the church where you at, right? It lifts up the church, but it also convinces other people to come on in the church. Hey, what y'all talking about over there? Say that with us. I was watching Joe. Uh, one in the morning. That's what I And She said, you just an anointed the whole outside. See it? See it? You know? The whole outdoor. I know. I said, that's the spirit of the God. Girl, I've been here trying to let him work too. So. <laughs> Over, see? The whole outside. That was just, you done anointed the whole outside. She was standing there. She was just look and look at it. You know, and she was fascinated. I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tell you. A year the vessel can do something do some stuff. And you were just yielding. You yielded, yeah, trying to learn the song. But then you begin to lose yourself in the worship. You went, oh, see, this is what I'm trying to get. This is what I pray that people start to understand. Is that is that is that what God desires for each individual is a yielded, a willingness to yield to him and allow and, and allow what he put in us to come up. This is why we worship the way we do. This is why, look, this is why this church will go from morning announcements to offertory in about 12 minutes. You know why? Because we don't do a whole lot of talking. We don't do a whole lot of, you know, we don't do an announcement for 15 minutes and then somebody else get up with the pastor get up to say something. He don't get up there for 25 minutes, 30 minutes. I get up there for one or two minutes, if that much. And if God give me something to say, that that's gonna, gonna, gonna encourage the people. That's what I do. But I sit, I sit down because I'm moving out of the way. We do things to move out of the way. So when the spirit falls, the spirit will fall like he wants. He ain't gonna look. You know, I got a weed here that um I had it for too long. And it wasn't meant to last that long, but I still got it. And sometimes I had to crank that thing almost half a day to get that thing to work right. Sometimes in our worship, God is able. 
God is able to show up every time, every time we come in, come into the house of God is here, he is there. But you know what we do? We we take too long with our stuff. We take too long, and then and then look, we human. Then our mind get wondering. What are you talking about over there? What are you doing over there? And all of a sudden, when we was on Jesus for the first half hour of the service, all of a sudden our mind everywhere else. And then when the Holy Ghost said, What are y'all doing? I'm here. And we got to crank it up. Crank it up. Crank it up. Somebody better say something. Somebody better say something hot. Or the preacher better jump over the chandelier and turn the flip, walk with his hand down the aisle because we done lost it. Because we took too long. We don't do that. We moved. When I came in, Turn off the alarm, lock, unlock the door. It rusty in me. As soon as I turn the key and open the door, it rusty. And, that's what we and want. I went up there and I got to do what I had to do. And, you know, I spent that time with it when I got that stuff. You know, I, I did it there. And then I went up there. Then I went to unlock the door. And then it went to the wall. <laughs> and then the Sunday school, everything was just on a beat. And if y'all didn't see it Sunday, I don't know. And the spirit was in the place, Lord, just yes, like that. It was so good. When the time I turned the piece of a lot of the door, straight on, it was so strong and so thick, and I prayed for the people. It's just very good. Yeah. <laughs> and you know what? Watch this now. Watch this. This is how the spirit ought to be moving any time we in the building. <laughs> any time, no matter what we hear for. The spirit ought to have free reign. Because see, one of the reasons why we come to intercessory prayer, do y'all know one of the reasons why we pray in intercessory prayer? We pray for other people. But you know who one of the reasons? Because because God's God's house should be the house of prayer. It should be much prayer going on here all the time. Not just on this Wednesday. So when we come together, what what we're doing is we're we're laying foundation. We're laying foundation for the spirit of God to be free and move in this place. And we should do everything we can to keep it flowing. That's why we worship in the spirit. That's why we we don't allow a whole lot of other things to go on in the school. Look, and I say allow. What I mean is we try to to to, to usher in the spirit and keep the spirit flowing. Some of y'all old enough to remember what it is to have the bank of soul. You know what I'm saying? Or the bank of fire. When you know when the fire done died down, and you know you can put that stick in it right, and, and you can catch it, and you can catch it. Before it get too long there, you wait too long, you can't catch it. But you can catch the embers and you'll start that fire right back up. Why? Because because you don't caught it that time. And that's what we try to do in the service. So don't, don't, don't hear a loud like we letting some things go. No, 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 no. What I'm saying is we move in such a way that the spirit is welcome in this place and that the minds and the hearts can be conducive to worship. And when the minds and the hearts are conducive to worship, we have what happened in here Sunday. I told y'all, sometimes we look for manifestation of God, and we look for new cars, brand new homes, money, 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 all this, you know, neon lights to flash it. God just showed up with his love. God just showed up with his love, and, he, and his love turned it out. Boy, see, see, that's the kind of, see, but this is the evidence of the Holy Spirit. This is the evidence of the Holy Spirit. And when the heaven and when there is evidence of the Holy Spirit, you gonna know he's been there. You don't need to call CSI. See if you can catch a fingerprint here or there. You will know his stamp has been upon this place. In the old in the New Testament, it was that they began to speak in tongues. And as the Lord gave utterance, they began to see the fire. They began to see the anointing. They began to hear a word that came out of Peter's mouth that, that was different than anything he had ever preached 50 days prior. 50 days prior to all that he running and ducking and hiding behind. He was hiding behind the fire of man. But, it, but, but, but on that day of Pentecost, he was standing up in the fire of God, preaching, uh, preaching according to God's glory, preaching according to the word. Why? Because he allowed the spirit to come in. This same spirit that we're talking about right here, they're talking about that will testify the truth of the signs and wonders and miracles and gifts that's inside of all of us. We ought to be able to use that to win souls. Any questions? Everybody? Huh? Amen, amen. Amen, amen. There you go. Look what Jesus is saying to Nathaniel when he began to talk to him about what he had seen. Jesus, the, the fact that he was saying that, that I saw you under the fig tree, it was a sign to Nathaniel. Because there was no doubt that he was under the fig tree. 
and, 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 and the kind of man that we look at that Nathaniel was, he was somebody that was seeking something from God for real. No doubt that he had prayed one day that God's chosen would come. Remember what Philip said, we have found him. Like, you know how you can talk to your buddies and they know exactly what you're talking about. You don't need to go into a whole lot of conversation and tell somebody that you're always in contact with, always in communication with, exactly what you're talking about. Maybe nobody else don't know, but you can pick up a conversation from two or three days ago, and somebody knows exactly what you're talking about, because y'all done talked about this thing a whole lot before. So Philip just came and said, look, we found him. And, man, you ain't found nobody. I know who we looking for. You ain't found him. You can't, man, and look, he in Nazareth. No, I know you ain't found him now. You talking about he from, man, come on, man, you ain't really found him. But yes, he had. Jesus did the one thing to Nathaniel. Oh, and we gotta get this. It is some people that you can't reach with your vow. It is some people you can't reach with your conversation. It is some people that show me for. Show me some. Show me how you live. Show me how God has changed you. Show me a sign. I know you from the street. I know you. Show me, show me how you, oh, no, you doing this now? Yeah, it must be a, because I heard the defendant say, oh, it must be a God. It must be a God if he can pull you in, if he can, if he can change you. Show me, a, it's some people you can't get with nothing else but a sign. That's all. And this is what he got Nathaniel with. No doubt he had been looking for this. No doubt he had been meditating on, on all these promises of God. Now he done ran across the anointing of God. That I know you were anointed because there ain't no way you could have seen me over there. Nobody would have had time to tell you. How you, you didn't even know me. You didn't even know who to look for. But you're going to get and still you're going to tell me. You're going you're gonna to look and see that. That must mean that you can look within the very depths of my soul. You can look within the very recesses of my heart and mind and know exactly what I'm thinking and what I'm longing for. And what I'm longing for, this is what you're going to find other people. When, when you show them God, and they can really see God, yeah, be it a sign or a wonder, uh, and they really begin to know, yeah, yeah, this is God, and I begin to feel God, or or somehow or another, because I done did this plenty of times. I don't call myself a prophet or nothing, but I done talk to plenty of people, and all of a sudden I say something that I ain't supposed to know. And they talk for what, what in the world he's saying? How he know that? I done preached some stuff that I shouldn't have known nothing about, and I just done preached it, and don't even know why I said it. It might be something I got it crazy. But I done said it, and it be in the anointing, and it touched somebody. And I get the witness of it, I hear it, because I get the witness of it, even in the midst of it. I know it, I know it, I feel it. I feel that somebody's been touched by something I said. And then I'll get the witness of it later on. Sometimes it don't even come the same day. Sometimes I don't forget about it. Pastor, remember when you preached such and such? No, I don't remember. But, but anyway, Pastor, but, but you preached such and such, and that really blessed me. How did you know that I was right there? How did you know I was thinking about that? How did you know? No, I didn't know. But I saw you under the fig tree. No, I ain't see you under a real fig tree. I saw you in the anointing. Amen. I saw you in the anointing. And when I see you in the anointing, I'm like, look, God might not even show me it was you. I just don't say it. And once I say it, though, they begin to do something to that life. This is what the church needs. The church needs more people that are yielded to the gift. That's what we need. And, and look, I know we all have seen or heard about before. They claim to be moving in the anointing. Let me tell you, let me tell you, show far away to go if somebody moving in the anointing. If they are anointed, seek to embarrass you and, it, and, and hurt your feelings and make you make you uncomfortable. I mean, seek to do that. I mean, by just being ugly. Because anointing, oh, it is, it is the, the, the divine touch of God. It is, it, it is God's spirit resting in you. It is God's spirit in you. It is God saying, here, take a little bit of me, and you can have it. Take a little bit of me, and you can use it. You can use what I got, because I'm going to give it to you. That's the anointing. That's the anointing. And the anointing, look, because, because God is love, the anointing got to work in love. If the anointing ain't working in love, it ain't, it ain't the anointing. It's something else that you done made up. <laughs> if it ain't working in love, so so if the anointing, because I remember, look, y'all, I'm gonna tell y'all this, y'all probably heard it before. I remember, um, I remember I was in service, and um, they was walking, walking the aisle, prophesying, and I knew that I had been, I wasn't married then, right? So, you know. I'm gonna say this out here. I'm gonna say this out here because it was some dirt. But I knew I had been 
you know, skeezing around, yeah. doing this, doing that, doing other things. And I was like, Lord Jesus, don't let her come back here and promise that over me. Please, God. Please, God. And she was calling folks stuff out. I mean, nothing right. I mean, nothing, nothing embarrassing. You just yeah. talked about different situations and what God was going to do and what God was doing. And she was the only one. And I'm like, Lord Jesus. She come back and said, all right, here. Everybody gonna know what kind of dirt I've been doing. I'll pray, I'll pray. And she came, and I, I could feel her. I ain't look, I could just feel her. And um, she called me. She began to pray for me. She began to tell me some things. But she said something to me in my ear, and you know what the Lord is asking of me. And she didn't say it out loud. It ain't make nobody wonder about nothing. Nobody wonder about nothing but me. But it broke me down like a shotgun. I was like, Lord. She could have just, you could have just told her to say that, and that would have been embarrassing enough, and nobody would have maybe not have known. But that was, but see, the Holy Spirit in her would not embarrass me. And then we talked later, because I had to go back to her, because I know what the Lord had told her and showed her. She said, yeah, I seen it all. <laughs> but the Lord know, you know what it is. So I can say this to you, and the words you the wise is sufficient. I said, yes, ma'am. I was so thankful for God that he did not embarrass me and call my sin out the light. He called my sin out. He just didn't call it out so people could make fun of me and pick at me and, and, and I'd be embarrassed because being embarrassed wasn't going to save my soul. But being convicted was. It's a difference. Because I knew it was wrong. And that's what I prayed. I said, pray. I pray to God. God, I don't want you to get him. I don't want you to turn him upside down. I don't want you to hurt him. God, I just want you to convict him. Just make them know that what they're doing ain't right. Just let them know that God, God is real and God is alive and God is still moving. Because when God convict you, you're, you're changed. Yeah. If somebody embarrass you, all you do is get mad. Yeah. That's all you gonna do. Yeah. And you will shut them. Exactly. And, and, and the Holy Spirit don't do it like that. He won't do it like that. He refused to do it like that. Why? Because the Holy Spirit moves in love. And love is about saving you. Can a question come? You grace, right? Huh? Grace. That, there you go. That's what it's about. Love is about showing you that grace. Because all of us deserve to die. <laughs> deserve to die for what we've done already. But God said not so. Because I'm going I'm to send my love that is tempered with grace and has, and has the mercy. And it's going to make a difference in your life. And if we don't move, if we are, if we are people of God, and I just told this young lady what the anointing was. It was a piece of God inside of us. So if we got a piece of God inside of us and we ain't moving in love, I'm telling you, it ain't the right thing. Or we don't counterfeit it, or we don't carry what God has and perverted it and turn it wicked. Cause you know, that can happen now. You can take what God got, and it's beautiful and sanctified, and it's, and it's all together lovely, and, and twist it up in such a way that it's wicked. <laughs> and, you, and those type of people need to be rebuked. Those type of people need to be set down. Because if they ain't moving in love, they ought not move at all. They ought not move at all. Question? All right. Yes. I don't know it's not childhood, but that's a surprise. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, they um, get some ready. Saturday, Sunday, Sunday. Yeah, they get some ready. Sunday. And that's a different musician. And it's the only time he had to come. Um, now, and the thing you realize that here is a man that understands what I'm seeking for. Do you know sometimes we can't do a good enough job explaining who God is just by our mere words? And we can't do him justice. And folk need to see something. And once they see that and get that revelation of who God is for themselves, then they begin to see all the ways God fits in our lives. Sometimes I think it's hard for some people to understand how God fits. Like, sister right here, she right for you. How does God fit with that? God fits with that because he's going to keep on blessing you to not only be inspired to write, but inspire those to whom you write to who read your stuff. I heard some of your stuff. I heard some of your stuff. And it, and it, and it touched me in such a way that I really can't explain. And, and this is how God fits. Because God will take whatever gift we have. I know some people, I remember, I was thinking about a guy today that used to go to my mother's church. When they were first starting out, they were trying to build a, um, they were trying to build a complex and they had no money. They had a, I mean, a 50 acres or so. 
and they had all these little buildings and trying to run water to them all. And with this guy, he couldn't sing, he couldn't, he couldn't shout, he could barely pray, couldn't do that. But you know what his guilt was? He was a plumber. And they needed a plumber. And he did that plumbing for all he knew how. Wasn't getting paid nothing. And working hard. I was thinking about that man. I don't even know what I was thinking about that man today. I ain't seen this man in 30 some years. No, more than that, I was 15. I ain't seen this man in about 35, 36 years. I ain't thought about him in almost that long. But he came to my mind today because he didn't have much. And if you look at it, he didn't, I mean, he just regular to do. You know, he ain't been seen much in him. But he was a plump. And that was the one thing that was, well, that was one thing that they needed. And he did it for all his heart to do. And I know, I know wherever he is right now, but all that work he did, God, God is blessing that man. Because he gave what, whatever gift it is, God can use it. But God can use it in his kingdom. Because I'm going to tell you, you can't, you can't share what God has given you without some type of anointing. I was looking at some movie, and they were talking about nuclear bomb. I mean, the bomb right here, bomb bigger than this table. I mean, wide and thick, and, and, the, and the bad guy that wanted to blow it up, somebody stole his trigger. He got this nuclear bomb sitting right here that can blow up half the city, but he can't do nothing with it. You, you know why? It ain't have no way to deliver, have no way to trigger, have no way to set it off. What am I telling you? I don't care what's in you. You can have the greatest gift in the world, but if you ain't got that kind of a anointing to bring that thing out, it'll sit there and do nobody no good. And no matter what it is, if God get in you, God can take that gift and anoint and make it and make it useful for the king. That's all we're looking for. That's all we're looking for. Our lives should be lived so we be useful for the king. Useful for the king. What 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 good are we for God? You better think about it. What good am I in my present state? Am I any good for God? I could be. I could be. Because all of us that are breathing got potential to be useful for the king. I don't care what, what you got. If you ain't got nothing going on, but, or you think that you have nothing going on, sometimes you just need to sit down and talk to some people. Talk to talk to somebody who walk, who walk in an anointing. Talk to them. And you think that you ain't good for nothing? Talk to somebody that walk in an anointing. And you'll begin to find out just for the conversation, things will begin to come up. What good am I for the kingdom? How can I be better for the kingdom? This is what Jesus, this is what Jesus is doing now. When Jesus is calling these disciples, he's looking at people and saying, now, how can I use them for the kingdom? I know Andrew. Andrew that you don't have nothing about but three times in the whole gospel. But I know how I can use you. I'll use you to call your brother. I'll use you to call this brother. I'll use you to call that one. Philip, how can I use you? Philip, I'll use you. I'll use you to do this. I'll use you to do that. I'll use you to be a catalyst. I'll use you to go find find the five loaves and two fishes of bread. I'll use you. You know, Nathaniel, how can I use you? I can use you to be the example that, that, that hopes and dreams don't have to die just because you come to God. See, folks think everything should be. Folks think God just stop everything. God is not a stopper of nothing. God don't stop you. God don't stop what he's already put in you. God doesn't stop what he's already planned for you just because you come to him. God take that thing and, and, and stir it up. One of my great examples, how good is Italian dressing? It is so good. But it, it, is, it is better when you shake it up. If you let it all settle to the bottom, I tell you, I'm talking about that zesty Italian. If you let it all settle to the bottom and you pour off nothing but the oil on top, but you shake that thing up and you stir it up and you pour it out, you really got something. And that's what God does. God said, look, the devil decided to settle you. The devil decided to settle you and to make you something. The devil decided to trick you and make you think you ain't got nothing going on. The devil decided to keep you wrapped up into this issue. Huh? Yeah. I guess he is. Because he ain't got no truth. He ain't got nothing but illusion and trickery. That's all he got. That's his game. Deceit and lies. Trickery. Yeah, he, he is the master of illusion. I'll make you think. I'll make you think that it's good. But it's bad. I'll make you think but it's, that it's bad, but it's really good. You know, yeah. this is all he do. Whatever God has done, he do the opposite. He ain't got but one trick. And that's the word. That's it. That's it. That's it. But, 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 oh, yes. I was just going to say, like, and then, you know, like, I know for me, when I was, you know, following the devil, you know, I used to be my friend. 
and more and more than willing. Sometimes the Lord has done little things for me that I have been more than willing. You ought to heard me testify about the hole in my foot. I was just glad that my foot healed up. It didn't heal up right. And the Lord, and the Lord convicted me over that today. He said, your foot didn't heal up right, but you satisfied with it, ain't you? Well, you know, you learn to be satisfied, but I can do more for you than that. I can do more than, I can do more than that for you. I can do more. Look, I appreciate God so much, I don't want to seem like I'm bothering you. Yeah. God, you know what? This foot could have been cut off. Yeah. You didn't let it get that way. The foot, the foot could have been worse than it is now. Thank you for what you did, God. I'm good. But God said, I can do more than that for you. This is what he tells us the thing. This is what we need to understand. When we bring people to Christ, whatever, whatever brought you to Christ, I guarantee you, whatever brought you to Christ, you feel like it's good enough. Thank you, God. Get me off the street. Thank you, God, for giving me peace of mind. Thank you, God, for whatever you've done for me. But, I, but look, if you believe God can do that, God can do anything. Anything. God, God told me tonight that he put seed in this place. What you going to do with it? You know what you do with seed, right? You plant. You water. You nurture. You watch it grow. When it starts to grow, you don't let nothing get next to it. You build little fences around it. You keep the cold off it. You keep the animals off it. You don't let the children come through the balls in the garden and stomp on the little plants. You be, be hiding that folks. Get out my garden. What's wrong with you? Because my little plant about to grow. Well, not only is God going to do that with people here, not only is God doing that with people, not only is God doing that with people that he put here, and God putting all manner of folk here, right, putting all manner of folk, but not only will he do it with the people, but look, this is how good God is. Once he plant them, and he grow them, and they become Christian and saved and stop moving for God, then God says, now I'm going to replant you now, I'm going to replant you again. I was talking to Miss Alice, and he reminded me of this, she, um, did, did you tell me that, that you had a plant that you wanted to replant or pot or something, you, something, right? And you did that so it either could grow bigger or it could grow better somewhere else. Or you had took it to a to a certain place in the house that you wanted to set it outside so they could do more, right? All right, God did the same thing. God will plant some folk here and he'll save. And he's going to start on his way. But then, but then look, not only would he take those folk and replant them, but guess what? God didn't forget about the rest of us that already been here. <laughs> God wanted to replant some of us too. Some of us, some of us need to be replanted. We, we need to take it back. This is why we teach and preach the word. It is probably no idea of Christ that, that most of us ain't, ain't heard before. But you know why we keep preaching? You know why we keep teaching? Because we want people to take advantage of all of them. You know how you can see some stuff and hear some stuff, but you don't take advantage of that yet. You know, you go to the store, you don't buy everything you see in the store, even if you like it, right? You don't buy everything you see. You see it, man, that look good. I know that's gonna look good on me, but you don't buy everything you see. Uh huh. But you pick what you need and go on about your business. But you might come back around again and catch that thing at another time. And that's the same thing here. God got a word and a word that maybe some of us have have heard before, maybe something that God is desiring for us to do that we've heard before, and now God is calling us. He's calling us like he's calling me. He's like, you know, you've been looking for me, I've been right here. You've been desiring me, I've been right here. I'm ready to take you and take you to another level. I'm about to take you and take you out of what you're in and put you over somewhere else. I'm about to take you, I'm about to grow you, I'm about to enlarge you, I'm about to bless you, I'm about to anoint you. I'm about to change you. All these things are available. And not just to the new folk. Because look, if God was just doing it for the new folk, that would not be fair. <laughs> Lord, I need you to stop over here too. I've been doing this for a long time. And I, and God, I still need you to stop over here. I, I've been knowing about you since I was this big. But God, I still need to know more about you. And, and these are the things that we need to be willing to accept. These things that we're learning, even in this book of John, I know it took a long time to get through John chapter 1, but it got to be a reason. It's always a reason. It's always a reason. And I just thank God that God is showing. In this whole book of John, 
God is going to show us, look, God is not only going to show us how to witness to other people, but in the mix of us learning how to witness to other people, we're going to be learning how to get closer to God ourselves. Amen? Amen. But that's the book of God, chapter 1. We're going to um, chuck, I got a 